One of Kogias's greatest strengths and weaknesses is its unapologetic way of not directly explaining parts of the story. It's effective because it encourages the audience to connect pieces themselves, thus removing the feeling of being spoon-fed. At the same time, it's a problem when something actually needs an explanation but doesn't get one. Or worse, a poor explanation. Today, I'm going to discuss the highly debated topic and how did Nully survive the Flail Warhead. Regardless if this was a bad or good idea narrative-wise, it was universally accepted that this was a poorly explained part of the story. In today's video, I'm going to go over what we know, answering the outstanding questions about Nully's survival, and putting it all together to explain the timeline of events between Nully's evacuation and the firing of the Flea. At this point, this disclaimer is out of place, but regardless, spoiler alerts for Kogias, mostly from turn 18 and turn 23 of R2, and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, as I will be comparing them in this video. Also, keep in mind, due to a lack of concrete information, much of my analysis is going to be purely opinionated and at some point straight headcanon, because unfortunately, we don't know enough to really know for sure what happened. Without further ado, let's begin. Uh, just one moment. You... What? Even more. Obviously! See, I'm greed. I want everything you can think of. Then I propose a deal. Equivalent exchange! Huh? I'll give you... More! Awesome! Stuff... If you... Please... Like... Share... Comment... And co subscribe... Sorry about that. Interruption. We're off! Let's hit the road! So first, let's talk about what we actually know. After Schneisel destroys Pendragon, Psycho escapes to find Lelouch. Due to her injuries, Jeremiah instead takes her to get treated. While in bed, she talks to Jeremiah about what happened. Here is what she says. Schneisel had outmaneuvered us. He had another escape plane as a decoy during the Battle of Tokyo. And so, Jeremiah finishes her sentence with, The plane destroyed by the Flea warhead was the decoy and Saiko confirmed this. This explanation actually added more questions than the answered, which is one of the reasons why I'm making this video in the first place. But first, before we go into those questions that it asks, I want to go over why this explanation is terrible. Saiko mentioned a decoy plane as the means for how Schneizo outmaneuvered them. However, she is never shown to have any knowledge of a decoy plane, so what she's saying here doesn't make any sense. It's possible Rollo might have told Saiko if he checked the decoy plane, but we don't know for sure if that even happened. So with that in mind, how did she know it existed? Did anyone else know about the decoy plane? Lelouch never talked about it. Jeremiah never talked about it, although he might have referenced it, and we'll get to that later. It was odd how Jeremiah finished Saiko's thought as if he was aware that there was a decoy plane. We know for sure that only Schneizo and Alicia had any knowledge of the decoy plane. In reality, Psycho was talking to the audience here, not to the characters, because we knew about the two planes, but most of the characters didn't, especially Jeremiah and Psycho. It was only a decoy for the audience to make them think that that was the plane that Nelly was in, essentially breaking the fourth wall. I have no idea if that was the intention here, just my opinion. I'm always confused on how it was even a decoy plane. A decoy is defined as something that lures or entices a person or animal away from an intended course, typically into a trap. For this to work, the decoy generally goes first and then the actual intended target. This way, everyone draws their attention to the decoy, avoiding the actual target. Now, for this particular example, Nully's plane went first, and I know this because if it hadn't, Alicia would have lived instead of Nully and Sayako. I understand that in theory it was supposed to be a decoy plane, but in practice, it never fulfilled the role. My biggest issue with this explanation comes from the first part of the sentence. I don't even understand how Schneisel outmaneuvered them with the decoy plane. It wasn't like Rollo was escorting the wrong plane and Nelly was captured in mid-flight. I have even read the argument that Rawl thought the decoy plane was the real one. Thus, when he was piloting a nightmare frame, he was waiting for it to launch to take it out. So you could argue that Schneisel outmaneuvered them by anticipating that Lush would send people to capture Nelly and the decoy plane was to throw that team off. As a result, while Rawl waited for the plane to take off, 
Schneisel captured the actual plane with Saeco and Nunnally. Here's the problem with this idea. This was never explained in general, so it's all speculation. Now, let's assume that was Schneisel's plan. Saeco tells Lelouch that Rawl will get a nightmare frame to escort them. If they were in contact, why didn't Rawl ask Saeco to come out of the plane to confirm it was the right one? Or even better, if Rawl did know it was the wrong plane, as I suspect, why didn't Saeco wait for him before taking off. Why would they leave without his escort when they said they wouldn't? If they waited for Rollo, then Schneisel would have never got the chance to capture them, assuming the flail was never fired. The point is this. Schneisel definitely outmaneuvered them, but the decoy plane had nothing to do with it. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. Here are some questions that I have concerning the whole ordeal that were only made worse from the explanation and not really answered. How do we know there were two planes, meaning none of these? and Alicia's. Explain everything that Roll did, including his conversation involving Jeremiah in turn 19. Basically, I want to know exactly what was Roll doing the whole time and why. When did Nelly's plane actually take off? Obviously, it had been before the flare was fired, but a specific timetable would help put things into perspective. How and when did Schneisel capture Nully and Psycho? Again, this is very important, and I will explain later on when I try to answer the question. Let's begin by answering the easy question. How do we know that there were two planes? Well, I based this on a couple observations. We never see Alicia and Nully together in the plane at any given time. Nully is shown being escorted to the plane, but Alicia never joins her. When Psycho breaks into the plane, Alicia doesn't react to it, which implies she was in a different plane. During the flea explosion, Alicia is reacting in fear, almost attempting to flee, while Nully and Psycho are relatively calm. Although I will admit Psycho is turning her head back and forth, but nothing on the level of what what Alicia was doing. And not only wasn't really responding at all because she can't see, so it doesn't really matter, but Psycho was calm, and so I infer they were not really in any danger, unlike Alicia. You would expect that all three of them will be panicking and shown together, but we never see that in any scene. Alicia said that the nightmare frames surrounding the plane would make it a bigger target, so why would the plane that Nelly have would have nightmare frames in the docking bay, which is what we see. And something else important to note is that the hangar that contained the plane that Alicia was in was neither secured nor secret. I'm not sure if you'd want to have someone important escape through that entrance. More than likely, Nully was actually escaping through some place in the back of the bureau. Okay, now that's been taken care of. Next question. What's the deal with Rollo? There are many sub-questions that need to be addressed in order to understand his role in this entire ordeal. Did Rollo know that Lish's plane was a decoy? I lean towards yes, but it's unconfirmed. Since we know that Rollo wanted to kill Nully, it makes sense he would just go into the plane and kill her if possible. I speculate he must have used his Gios as part of his plan to board the plane and discover Nully was in fact not there. Because if she was there, he would have just killed her. And there's no way Psycho could have called Lelouch about finding Nully if Rollo had killed her prior. And more than likely, he would have probably killed Psycho. Also, during Colin's rescue, Psycho says that Rolla was moving in to secure Nully. Then later on, she says, We found the Viceroy, and Rolla will escort us with a nightmare frame. I interpret this as the following Rolla didn't find Nully when he went ahead and checked that plane, so he told Psycho to look elsewhere. She would later find Nully, and Rolla stayed in that hangar to steal a nightmare frame to escort them safely. The other important thing to note is that when Psycho says, We found the Viceroy, she never specified if she did or Rollo did, which is how I determined based on that vague statement that Rollo failed to find her and Psycho, with this knowledge, looked somewhere else in the bureau and did find her. And one more thing to consider about this to prove this point. Further, how would Rollo or Psycho know if they actually found Nully's plane? They would have to break into it first to find out. So when Psycho called Lelouch about finding the Viceroy, that happened after she broke in with her troops to secure her. Keep that in the back of your mind, we'll reference it later. Also, a side note here, I have another theory about Rollo going into the hangar, and that is, when he actually went there, it was not to find the plane, as Psycho already did. Instead, he was just there to find a nightmare to escort them. Okay, so with that in mind, how can we determine that Rollo piloted a nightmare frame to shoot Nunnally out, as one theory suggested? As I said earlier, if Rollo found Nunnally in the plane itself, he would have killed her on the spot. So that's how we know that Psycho found her. It would have been easier for Rollo to grab a nightmare frame and wait for Psycho 
motorcycle to inform him of their position, allowing him to escort the plane, but in reality he would take it out. That's a much faster plan than simply rendezvousing with Psycho and killing Nully. Plus, it would play into the whole narrative that he was actually trying to help her out the whole time and his bigger brother. Okay, follow-up question. If Nully's plane took off before the Flea, why did Roland not rendezvous with them? I came to one conclusion. Timing. Psycho and Nully took off prematurely because the Flea was fired. Basically, there was enough time for them to escape, but not enough time for Roland to escort them. Roland was shown waiting and was forced to retreat prematurely, although he never expresses that he missed the chance to take out Nully, hence why it's a theory. But the important part to note is that he was told to leave prematurely, so in my conclusion, Psycho and Nully took off for the same reason, without Roland's escort. The last thing I want to talk about, which does provide some interesting information, is Roland's conversation with Jeremiah after he brings Lush into the Ikaruga. When talking to Jeremiah, he says the following, Please give my brother some time right now. You can talk to him later. Yeah, right. It may not be much of anything. After all, I'm here with him. Okay, my interpretation might be a stretch, and I realize Jeremiah is most likely referring to Lush being alone without Nunnally. That's why Rollo said, I'm here with him. I do speculate that Jeremiah might have been referring to something in the ballpark of, do you know for sure that Nunley is dead? Did you find the plane? Etc. Etc. Basically, questions that would confirm that Nunley would be alive or could be alive. And Rollo was merely saying that the possible doubts that Jeremiah has could be relevant but most likely aren't. That would explain why Jeremiah seemed confident when he told Suzaku he was going to find Nunley because on some level he thinks she could still be alive since Rawl didn't know for sure. So those are some theories about what was going on with Rawl during this whole ordeal. Next question, when did Nelly's plane take off? Well, it must have occurred sometime after Psycho says Master Zero, we found the Viceroy. Not that exact moment obviously, but sometime afterwards. When we see that scene later on, Psycho breaking to the plane to give us the illusion they haven't left yet, when in reality, that scene actually happened much earlier and shown later to fool you. And we know that scene occurs before she calls a luge for the logic I mentioned earlier that she can only confirm that Nelly was in the plane by breaking into it. I would guess that they left shortly before Colin and Suzaku's fight came to a close, which leads to the detonation of the Flea warhead. They also had to wait until the Gephion Disturbers were removed, which is why they were weighing in the first place. That's probably the other reason why Luch used the Gephion Disturbers in the first place, because he figured Nelly was going to escape in some kind of plane and this would prevent her from leaving, giving him a chance to capture her. And to add my point before, while they may have only started to leave before the flare was fired, my assumption is that they were going to wait for Rawl, just like Rawl left early because he was warned, I assume Psycho left early for the same reason. And if you're wondering if they would have enough time to escape, well, if the Ikaruga could get out of the way in a hurry, I don't know why Nully and Psycho couldn't, and keep in mind the flare had a limiter on it, so it wasn't even its full power. And finally, how and when did Schneisel capture the plane? In terms of when, it must have been after Psycho and Nelly escaped the explosion. Because if it happened any time later, they could have contacted Rolla or Lelouch. But since they didn't, I speculate she was captured almost immediately afterwards. And then of course, how did Schneisel actually capture Nelly? I never stated, I have a couple theories. Maybe the plane was remote controlled. Maybe he captured it from the Avalon Star Wars style. There could have been a tracker and Schneisel simply followed it. Whatever the case is, he must have captured the plane and imprisoned Psycho at the same time. And the reason why that's important, because Nelly would not work for Schneisel if she thought Psycho was in danger. So I speculate that Schneisel captured Psycho and told Nelly that she was dead, which Nelly then decided to work with Schneisel. I'm sure he lied to her on some means to get her to cooperate, as Schneisel tends to do with other people in the series. So now that we've gone over all the events that led to the flare and answered some outstanding questions, here's actually what I think happened. Not what we see, but the actual orb events. Here we go. Number 1. Zero activates the disturbers. Number 2. The Battle of Tokyo 2 begins. Number 3. Nelly is shown being loaded up into the escape plane. Number 4. Psycho rescues Colin. Number 5. Rollo travels to the hangar. Number 6. The Gephion disturbers are destroyed. Number 7. Alicia in the plane travels down the hangar. Number 8. Rollo arrives at the hangar shortly afterwards. Number 9. He checks the plane and doesn't find Nelly and informs Psycho of this. Number 10. Psycho, with this in mind, looks elsewhere and finds the right plane. Number 11. She breaks in to confirm Nelly is in that plane. Number 12. She then tells Rollo and arranges their transport. Number 13. Alush gets the call that Psycho found the Viceroy. Number 14. Rawl gets into a nightmare frame with the intent to shoot down the plane once Psycho tells her where they are. Number 15. Psycho and Nelly begin to take off. 
Number 16. Colin at the same time is bothered to deliver the finishing blow to Suzaku, and as a result, he fires the Flea to live. Number 17. Rollo, while waiting for Saiko, flees because of the Flea. Number 18. Nully and Saiko are in flight. 19. By the time we see Saiko and Nully in the plane at the end, with the uh, reflection of the Flea on them, they are safely away from the explosion. And that is, in my mind, what actually happened in turn 18 and the Battle of Tokyo 2. Before I end this video, I just wanted to point out that I don't understand why they couldn't explain what went on to plan this whole ordeal. I have seen other examples from different shows which do. One of the best examples that comes to mind is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. At the end of episode 38, Edward runs out in anger because Winry was taken hostage by Scar. Scar using Winry as a hostage flees, which created a reasonable explanation for how she got away that didn't involve the Elric brothers. They had to do that because if the Elric brothers had to lie, Kimberly wouldn't have believed it. In the next episode, they actually show how they came up with this plan. Details included. It would have been easy to just show everyone in the mines and let the audience figure it out for themselves, but F maybe didn't do that. Kogia should have followed suit and shown the entire sequence of events that led up to how Nully was supposed to have died and how she survived. They could have shown the scenes of the actual plan, or the whole event, rather, when Saiko was talking to Jeremiah, or during the scene where Nully is revealed to be alive. Here is what we needed to see. Shinaizo talking to Alicia about the decoy plane, including that she will pilot the decoy and assure her that Flea would not be fired in this battle. Basically, the entire plan that they came up with to fool Lelouch's team. Rollo then needs to be shown communicating with Saiko when she found Nunnally, or they discuss if Rollo found a duplicate plane, so Saiko went on her own to find Nunnally, but really, we just need something to show who found the plane and when. This could be combined with showing the scenes of Saiko breaking into the plane in real time and informing Lelouch that they found Nunnally. We could even see Saiko's point of view during that call. After this, we would need to see Saiko and Nunnally escaping during the Flea explosion, and finally Schneisel capturing both of them while they're in flight, and show how Saiko escaped after Schneisel destroyed Pendragon. Instead, we get nothing, and even the new alternative universe recap films don't introduce any new information. Even though this is something we actually need some more information on. I wish the creators had made an OVA or just something. But it is what it is. If you make a cake and it falls, it becomes a pudding. Meaning, while we don't have an explanation, it is fun to speculate and piece it together ourselves, even if the story should have done it for us. And that's how I try to find the positives in this situation. And with that, we have come to the end. If you like this video, please check out my blog. Any video topic is discussed here has already been written as an article, so if you want to get ahead of the game or see a longer explanation on certain topics, that's why I recommend going. Please grab my free anime streaming guide for August. I will leave a link in the description below. What's your theory on Nelly surviving the Flea Warhead? Do you think the story provided enough information? Or maybe I was seeing it from the wrong point of view. What do you think about my theory? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, the world is not a dark place, and tomorrow will be a good day. Thanks for watching.